Hello! Good morning everyone! Happy Mon- Happy Wednesday! Wednesday na pala! Yes, happy Wednesday sa ating lahat! I hope everyone is doing just fine. Yes, this is my second take. <laughs> Ang iingin ng mga aso kanina. <laughs> Kaya kailang ulitin. Well, hindi naman ako. I-, I was already in the middle. Wait, midway na ako. So, there! Uh, for today, we will be covering two modules. Yes, dalawang module tayo for today. Ay, uh, sana makahabol talaga tayo no kahit papaano. I I hope you guys were able to watch your module 1 about ancient civilizations. If not, it's available in this channel that you're watching. And by the way, I, I'll also have to confirm kung until what module ang ating um, prelim exams. So, hopefully makakuha agad ako ng sagot so I can prepare this in advance. Anyways, yes. I hope you guys are ready, because I am ready. It's time to work, and it's your time to study and learn. So, um, you can take notes if you want, and you can also pull up a copy of the module para makasabay, no? But the module itself is just too compressed, so I added a few important details in this presentation. Alright, so, let's begin. Um... Alright, so here are the learning objectives for our second module. So to, we'll go, we're going to discuss the concept and the importance of science education. And we'll also identify some schools established to promote science education in the Philippines. So interesting. Okay, so let's begin. Um, when we talk about science education, it's, it's important that we go back to the basics. No? It's about science. So science is important to to everyone and hindi natin may kakaila that there are a lot of students in the primary and secondary levels who wish to pursue careers in in science, technology and uh, engineering. And for this reason, science education is one of the best answers to prepare these students para sa kanilang mga pangarap. So the focus of science education is teaching, learning, and understanding science. All right. Now it does not only mean teaching science. Now science education also incorporates an enriched curriculum, okay, with focus on science and mathematics. Well, with obvious reason, dahil magkakambal yan eh, magkapatid yung science and mathematics. Ah. Uh, the learning uh, of science is also important for the nation's cultural development and preservation of its cultural identity. Um, we know that science is uh, it is most useful to a country when when it is utilized to solve its own problems and challenges. You know? Keeping a nation's cultural uniqueness intact okay it helps science helps a nation's cultural uniqueness it intact and this is the reason why in many countries science teaching and learning is linked with culture so with that said ito yung pinaka ini envision talaga ng science education sa philippines Um, the Philippines grades 1 to 10 science curriculum envisions the development of, okay, naka-highlighted dito ah, scientifically, technologically, and environmentally literate and productive members of society. So they must possess effective communication and interpersonal lifelong learning skills as well as scientific values and attitudes. Okay. So, ang talagang pinupush ng science education is to develop students' scientific inquiry skills, values, and um, attitudes. Okay? Diyan pumapasok yung pagiging ob- objective. Ito yung objectivity, uh, curiosity, honesty, and uh, pati na din ang critical thinking. Alright. But, why is there a need for it? Why is there a need for science education? So, I have compiled here some of the crucial questions that were deliberately asked by science education specialists, even school teachers, no? 
about uh, why there is a need for science education. So I want you to read each of these bullet items, okay? I want you to look at the, the pattern of these questions, okay? So basically, <coughs> um, it is noted here that the existing science curriculum sa basic education level natin, it does not jibe or hindi siya tumutugma with the expectations of industry, the university, or the, 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 the whole society at large. Okay? E, bibag sabihin nun ay, uh, unyo, when a high school student from a basic education curriculum enters college, his or her science knowledge is not at par with what the university expects. Okay? And uh, when a college student graduates from school, you know, does his scientific knowledge meet the, the realities and expectations of the society? Sapat na ba ang alam niya or kulang pa? So itong mga questions na ito, these were the conclusions that were based on the following data. The drop, the drop out, okay? It's a typographical yan. Drop out rate is high. Okay? Sabi dito na, um, <clears throat> out of 100 enrolled pupils in grade 1, only 65 will finish in grade 6. And then out of the 65, only 56 will be able to enroll in secondary school. Okay, grabe yun. Kalahati na kaagad. Mula 100 to 56, almost half. And then, out of this 56, only 46 will graduate in fourth year. And from this 46, only about 2% will choose science and related fields. So imagine, what is 2% of 46? It's roughly, I don't know, roughly one. One student only. So ito yung gap na gustong i-bridge ng science education. That, um, be because once you are able to, to bridge this gap, you know, children who are well versed in different scientific skills could make use of these skills to their advantage and make important contributions to to the economic development of the country. Okay, so let's uh, let's try to identify the design schools that were established to promote science education in the Philippines. So I have here included. The, the the top five well we only have five as per the module and uh, ito yung mga logo no? ang kaganda ng logo nila so I have here the PSHSS uh, the Philippine Science High School System the Rizal National Science High School the SSES Project of DepEd and Manila Science High School and the Quezon City Science High School okay let's just, just try to briefly uh, take a look at what each of these science high school is all about so, Pisay, ayan, P-S-H-S, ayan, colloquially known as uh, Pisay, okay? So, the best of the best in science and mathematics, that is how graduates from Philippine Science High School are well known of. Uh, uh, well, there's no doubt naman, di ba? Although this is not the, the first science high school, it is considered as the number one science high school in the Philippines. So this is a specialized, okay, the, the word specialized, no? public high school system that operates as an attached agency of the DOST, uh, Department of Science and Technology. So right now, it has 16 campuses nationwide, uh, established in 1964. So yung 16 campuses na yan ay nakakalat yan towards uh, the 16 regions in the, the Philippines. So, saan ba matatagpuan? Sa Calabarzon region, saan matatagpuan ang uh, Philippine Science High School campus? Aha, uh -huh. yeah, sa Batangas. All right? Good. So, um as of school year 2018-2019, uh, it had 8,358 scholars, okay? Parang pangat naman yung students lang. Kailangan scholars, okay? So, it offers scholarships to Filipino students who have high aptitude in science and mathematics, okay? Look at the word aptitude, okay? How do you understand the word aptitude? Okay, when you say aptitude, hindi lang yan sufficient knowledge, no? It, it, it means, it basically means uh, a high level of intellect, 
okay high level of intellect yung aptitude and uh, PSI offers a world class curriculum specializing in science uh, technology engineering and mathematics this the stem all right and admission to PSI is competitive is by competitive examination known as the NCE the national competitive examination conducted every month of October Siguro sa inyo kayo, may mga kilala kayo, if ever, na relative or cousins na nag-aaral sa Pisay. Uh, grabe, siguro uh, sobrang talino talaga mga estudyante dito. Alright, we have the Rizal National Science High School. Ayan, ito ang pambato ng ating probinsya. So, it was conceived and proposed by then Congressman Gilberto Duavit uh, who envisioned this high school to be the knowledge center in Asia. Yun lang yung naging envision niya ha. Yun lang yung naging vision niya. To be the knowledge center in Asia. So it was established in 1998. And it's now only the science high school in the province of Rizal. Alright. Now, um, an interesting fact about here is that admission is strictly for residents of Rizal province. Uh, if not then the applicant must have maintained residence in the province for at least a year uh, before his or her application. Okay. Mm-hmm. Ito naman tayo, pangatlo. Let's uh, go on to the SSES or the Special Science Elementary Schools Project of the Department of Education. Okay. Uh, so it started uh, in 2007-2008. So medyo recent lang siya with 57 identified schools for batch one and then uh, a year later uh, it expanded to 43 more schools so uh, um, there are there are about a hundred schools na identified for this project so what is this project all about this project is intended for gifted children in public elementary schools okay so kung yung the other four schools natin they are they are focused on high school secondary level etong SSES, it's for the public elementary schools naman. Okay? And its aim is to produce scientifically literate students who will opt to be educated in special science high schools. Okay? Um, the graduates from these schools, elementary schools, are expected to continue their secondary education in science high schools all over the country. No? But although SSES is also part of the public school system, the project provides physical infrastructures and methodology different from other science classes being held at the primary level. Okay? So, makikita din natin dito yung, yung length and duration ng um, science and health or, yeah, science uh, in grades 1 to 3, 70 minutes. For grades 4 to 6, it's 80 minutes. So, enriched. It's, it has an en enriched science curriculum. Okay? Also, the, the competencies listed in the SSES um, curriculum are higher order thinking skills or HOTS based and learner oriented activities are highly recommended. Ano ibig sabihin nun? Um, For grades 1 and 2, um, sa basic education kasi natin, uh, ideally, for grades 1 and 2, um, hindi pa tinuturo ang science. No? But sa special education system, uh, for grades 1 and 2, the curriculum offered contains already concepts that are benchmarked uh, for uh, grade 3 students. Okay, so pag grade 1 pa lang or grade 2, ang, ang may mga concepts na kaagad na inaaral that is, that is only or that is uh, originally intended for grade 3 students. So that's what we meant by higher order thinking skills. Ayan, uh, in a regular public school set, setting, teaching science formally starts in grade 3. There's no separate science subject for grades 1 and 2. On the other hand, in the SSES setting, science is formally taught in grade 1. Okay. 
So, nandito, I have here an image comparison of two schools based on selection process, minimum grade requirement, and number of children per classroom. Okay? So, makita natin dito yung regular public elementary school and special science. Okay? So, sa special science, it has rigid screening process. Okay? At pag sinabi natin rigid screening process, hindi lang yan uh, entrance exam. Meron din yung psychological and interview na nagaganap. And mind you, 85% ang minimum grade requirement. Uh, th that is not only for science, ha? it's also for mathematics. That's a minimum grade requirement. So kapag medyo bumaba ka dyan, hindi ka naman mapupull out. So you will just be put on probationary, but there will be intervention measures to make sure that you meet the requirement uh, on the following grading period. And then the number of children, maximum, maximum of 35 sa uh, SSES. Okay? Hindi dapat lumagpas ng 35. Alright, number 4. The first science high school in the Philippines. Tandaan nyo yan, ha? First science high school in the Philippines. Manila Science High School. So, it's located in Ermita, Manila. Uh, established in 1963. Uh, one year ahead of Pisay. Okay? It was envisioned by then-President Ramon Magsaysay, who saw the great need of stepping up the development of fundamental and applied research in science and technology, which has long been neglected. So, uh, as of school year 2020-2021, it has 1,217 uh, students. <coughs> and uh, because the Manila Science High School aims to turn out scientists with souls. Ayan, yan yung parang, parang nagiging motto or uh, uh, guiding principle nila. Scientists with souls. Uh, In-offer din yan ang humanities and other electives. It's also included sa curriculum on top of the uh, enriched cur curriculum na meron sila. I'm not sure kung how do you refer Manila Science High School in colloquial term Masaiba <laughs> MS Masai Manila Science High School. All right, number 5 ito na. Uh, Quezon City Science High School, uh, colloquially known as uh, Kisai. So it is the regional science high school um, for the National Capital Region. It's the premier science high school of QC. And it is regarded as one of the prestigious sciences triumvirate of the Republic of the Philippines. Okay, pag sinabi nating triumvirate science uh, school, yung tatlong pinakamatitindi, pinakamalulupit na science school. So, Man Quezon City Science High School, Philippine Science High School, and Manila Science High School. So, ito, they had a recent um, achievement in the international arena. In 2004, not so recent pala ito, no? When a group of its student researchers received the fourth grand award in the Intel International Science and Engineering Fair held in Portland, Oregon. So, abukod sa curriculum ng Kisai, they are also focused producing in quality research papers. In fact, it is home of the two of the best secondary papers in the Philippines. <laughs> And it's also renowned as a center of excellence for its Spanish elective. Nice, no? Imagine high school students pala, pero they are already groomed to, to speak a third language no? on top of Tagalog and English. Spanish elective. That's really, really nice. So again, the, these are the five science schools established to promote science education in the Philippines. I hope na medyo dumami sila. Or if not, I, I think this is already enough, no? Uh, kasi ang Pisay naman, it has regional campuses naman all over the country. But uh, there are issues surrounding the science schools, of course. Uh, education is a huge sector and... Uh, rampant na rin ng mga issues dyan. So, there is also a need to revisit the implementation of curriculum in these science schools, uh, especially the other science schools because PISAI, the way PISAI performs, it's just, it's it's on another level. And the other science high schools has to to be at par, no? Kailangan humabol. 
um, meron ding ibang according to some other scholars or some other articles they also claim that Siam, some science high schools are there in in name only okay pangalan lang but not in essence so kailangan talagang i-look into yung curriculum tsaka yung practices ng mga science high schools na ito so that they can improve their performance There you go. Module 2 is done. Huh? Awesome. Okay. Module 3. Oh, I should have uh, put here the pala the, the, um, the title no, of Module 3. Uh, mod our Module 3 is Intellectual Revolutions That Define Society. Ayan, you can hear my puppies. My ingay. <laughs> All right, so intellectual evolutions that define society. We have a few objectives here. So discuss how the ideas postulated by Copernicus, Darwin, and Freud contributed to the spark of scientific revolution. Uh, to describe the development of science and technology during the scientific revolution and explain, recognize the significance of technology invented during the scientific revolution and in uh, articulate ways by which society is transformed by science and technology. Alright, so here are the three main men, okay? The main guys, okay? Copernicus, Sigmund Freud, and Charles Darwin. And uh, let us see how did their ideas contribute to the spark of scientific revolution. Well, let's begin with Copernicus. So, Copernicus was a Polish astronomer who was the first one to say the Sun was the center of the solar system with the planets orbiting it also known as the Copernican theory and he uh, presented it with proofs involving physics mathematics and cosmology Copernicus was among the first to inquire into the nature of the stars since the times of Greece and Rome. No? Um, bago lumabas ang Copernican theory, meron tayong tinatawag na geocentric model of Ptolemy. According to Ptolemy naman, the Earth was the center of the universe. Okay? So the sun, the planets, the, the, the and other constellations, uh, and other the sun the and other planets they orbit the earth that's according to the geocentric model of Ptolemy however it was refuted by the Copernican theory na according to Cop Copernicus it was actually the sun that was the center of the solar system so this Copernican heliocentrism is often regarded as the launching point to modern astronomy and the scientific revolution. Why? You see, this Copernican theory, it, it gave us the important framework for understanding the universe. From this very crucial discovery, it forever changed an, our understanding of the world we live in. Okay? So imagine if, imagine if Copernicus did not present his theory. And we are still left in the belief that Earth is the center of everything. Imagine what could have what could have been. What would be the kind of life? What would be the kind of technology that we will have if we we, we re, if if we re, if we remain faithful to the geocentric model? So, Copernicus was influential. And in fact, his contributions influenced Galileo, Kepler, Descartes, and Newton, which also had their own individual achievements, notable achievements. All right, Sigmund Freud. Okay, so Sigmund Freud was an Austrian neurologist considered as the founding father of psychoanalysis. Um, a method for treating mental illness and also a theory which explains human behavior. Um, you studied this, no? So, yung first year kayo? Uh, so I think if you had understanding the self na subject, so inaral nyo yan, psychoanalysis, it's a, it's a method. 
treating emotional disorders uh, it kind of involve treatment sessions kung, kung, kung saan the patient is encouraged to talk freely about personal experiences especially about you know early childhood and dreams because according to Freud um, our early childhood stages can have an impact on the on the adult uh, human personality all right so what is a neurologist what is a uh, how did a neurologist somehow impact or contribute to the spark of scientific revolution well in fact um, may mga nagsasabi na si Freud along with Charles Darwin they were not part of the the scientific no scientific revolution however they did revolutionize the human thought okay so Freud introduced psychology psychiatry and he was the first to analyze human thought and to deconstruct the human condition trying to find scientific connections between actions thoughts events and uh, relations so his influence on the field remains strong and it actually continues to generate so much controversy all right and then we, we have charles darwin okay often regarded as the greatest biologist in history okay he formulated the theory of evolution by natural selection na matatagpuan sa kanyang libro na on the origins of species now according to him this is the process by which organisms change over time as a result of changes in heritable physical or behavioral traits and up until now this is still generally the best available explanation of the way of life on how the way of life on this planet develop okay the uh, survival of the fittest okay you know what's notable about Charles Darwin is that Darwin revolutionized revolutionized human human thought by uh, introducing this principle of uh, evolution this evolutionary principle okay and hindi lang siya nanatili there it, it also impacted all fields of science from physics to economics and even chemistry okay eto si Charles Darwin he is a proclaimed atheist atheist siya he does not believe in God he does not believe in Jesus and he does not believe in the literal truth of the Bible one astounding uh, part about uh, Darwin's story is that perhaps he was perhaps the first non-physicist non-mathematician to cause a scientific revolution no he's a biologist all right mm -hmm. so uh, what can we deduce from these people from Darwin from Copernicus from uh, Sigmund Freud is that their studies and their knowledge have have somehow become the basis of many other theories and knowledge that that have existed as well so ganun ang kalawak ang influence and impact of their contribution to the scientific revolution and having said that let's also try to identify or to describe what exactly is the scientific revolution okay so a scientific revolution that's the drastic change in scientific thought that took place during the 16th and 17th century this is then a new view of nature okay that replaced the Greek view that had dominated science for almost 2,000 years okay science became an autonomous discipline distinct from both philosophy and technology scientific revolution paved the way for the emergence of modern science diba matagal na stuck sa greek and medieval science ang ang mga tao so ito yung mga panahon na very little evidence to support the idea and that most scholars they believe that god created the universe so maraming theories ang base sa religious uh, religious foundations now as the scientific revolution was not marked by any single change yeah okay yeah that's very true kasi during the scientific revolution napakadaming ideas ang lumabas 
some of them were revolutions in their own fields like nandiyan yung law of gravitation okay nandiyan na rin nagsimula yung studying of human anatomy based upon the dissection of human corpses and modernization of uh, his disciplines okay Ma meaning making them more as what they are today yeah including dentistry physiology chemistry or optics So, uh, I'm going to ask you, how is the society being transformed by science and technology? I want you to think about this question, okay? So, I have here listed here just a few, just a three, uh, maybe important or uh, um, reasons and uh, ways on how society is being transformed by science and technology. Una -una na dyan yung Developments in science and technology are fundamentally altering the way people live, connect, communicate, and transact. Do you agree? No? Whether we like it or not, napakadaming mabigat na effects ang science and technology sa economic development. And that is why countries, mga bansa, no, especially middle income or developing countries like the Philippines, you know, it's important that they promote science and technology advancement by by how? By investing in quality education for the youth and continuous skills and training for the workers and the managers. Siyempre, forever changing ang technology. So, kailangan makasabay din ang mga laborers. Well, science and technology are key drivers to development. Yes, definitely. Because technological and scientific revolutions, they support economic advances, improvements in health systems, education, and infrastructure. Okay, nagsusulputa na yung mga new products, new sectors, new, indus new industries are emerging. No? May, meron tayong telecommunication, biotechnology, nanotechnology, kung ano-ano mga technology, di ba? May mga breakthroughs na din sa health services and education. So, you see, uh, posible na pala na ma-eradicate ang malaria, okay? Uh, and then, may mga gamot na rin for other diseases, which are endemic in developing countries. So these are the improvements that are contributed by science and technology. And finally, as an engine of growth, the potential of technology is endless. Okay? The word endless. Now this is especially true, lalo na sa Africa and uh, other developing regions across the globe. Talagang untapped, untapped pa ang potential ng technology. You see, before we just have computers, we have the internet, and now meron na tayong combination of both the computers and internet. Meron tayong cloud, meron tayong internet of things, AI, alright? So these are just a few crucial points as to how science and technology is transforming our society. And I hope that in the near future, once you, once you face the world of employment or business, I hope you take advantage of whatever technology that is best available for you. You know, science and technology are definitely inseparable. No? Hindi natin maaalis yan sa buhay natin eh. Kakambal na natin yan. And we have to use it to our own advantage. Alright. Alright. There you have it, our module 2 and module 3, our brief description. And I hope you learned, again, I hope you learned a thing or two for today. And um, I hope you are well and safe at the comforts of your own home. Again, if you have any questions, just feel free to message me as a messenger. Or we can also, you can also raise some questions at the um, <clears throat> online class, which will be on next week, Monday. Ayan. All right, very good. So, again, thank you so much uh, for listening, for watching this until the end. Um, I hope to see you. I hope to have uh, to hear again, to, to hear you guys on Monday, and uh, I wish you a very happy weekend. Okay, thank you so much, and uh, God bless everyone. Keep safe. Goodbye.